Well, Chris, how, how important is this game? Obviously, everyone it's important, but the fact, you know, three losses, you know, you're going now headed to the mid, midpoint of the season. Mm -hmm. I mean, is this kind of a, a make or break game for you guys? I don't know if it's make or break, but it's definitely a very important game for us. Mm -hmm. um, like you say, we're on in, in the midst of a three game slide. Obviously, like nobody wants to be in that uh, in that position, but I think it's a great opportunity for us, you know, to try to get back on track, you know, versus a team that, that's going to provide some challenges for us. You know, like they got some good players on offense, some good players on defense. Um, and they're coming off a loss too, so surely like they'll be they'll be playing hard. Um, but again, it's a good opportunity for us to see who we are as a team, um, see kind of how we've grown so far, and, and see how much room we have to grow. Did the Carolina win over <laughs> Houston last week help with the blueprint at all and how, how to beat them? Uh, not not necessarily. You know, we run two different offenses, um, like like scheme like scheme wise, it's, it's different. But I think like at, at the end of the day, right, like. It's understanding what the, what their defense is going to do, like what their respective team is going to do, and trying to attack it the the best way possible. Um, we are, like, we have the talent. We just have to go out there. We have to do a much better job of executing. We got to have a lot more energy coming out of the gate, um, and we just got to be consistent throughout the game. As a leader on this team, how how do you guys kind of self police these these penalties? Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, it's, you know we have to address them. You know, we can't just let them go by the wayside and just act like they're not happening. Um, I don't think that the guys that are doing them, like nobody's gone out there trying to commit penalties. Like we understand that, you know? So it's just like having a little bit more attention to detail um, and just working on that at practice, right? Like whether we're playing at an, uh, an away game and we need some crowd noise, like working that, or if it's like we're at home and we just got to work on some, you know, some different cadences. But understanding where the problem is and understanding how we have to address it is the big part. With teams kind of keying in on the fact that Baker has that escapability and mm -hmm. squeezing the pocket a little more, yeah. how does that impact what you guys are able to do with yeah, I mean, we really just got to be uh, really sharp on our, you know, on our drop back game, our quick game. Um, when opportunities present present themselves to to move the pocket a bit, we have to be able to take advantage of it. Uh, like you said, teams are aware of Bake's ability, and I mean it, that we have we have to be better at it. We have to have a counter to it, um, and we have to be in our in our spots for him so that he can trust to throw the ball in the right spots. What's the counter to the, all the cover two you're seeing right now? If you can't run the ball better, we gotta run the ball better. <laughs> you know, I, I think the good thing is that, um, you know, Dave, he's, he's not he's not gonna shy away from the run game. You know, and you know we have great calls. We have to do a better job of executing it, right? And you know, like like, like I keep saying, we have the talent, we have the guys. Um, we just gotta figure out like what that missing part is, like why it's not connecting. You know, and a lot of times it'll just be like one or two guys on on you know on each play, different guys. And it's like once we get all those guys clicking, you know, once we're all on the same page, I think you're gonna start to see some bigger runs, some of those fours turning to eights, you know, eights, fifteens, and then you know before you know it, you have an explosive run game, and that complements the pass game. Um, but and now we could do our thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You, can see progress, right? you definitely can see progress. And I mean, even like with Trace penalty, like that's an aggressive penalty, right? Like I think you like it'd be a, a totally different problem altogether if you just let the guy run right through him or didn't try to, you know, block him at all. Um, so like all things that are fixable, we just got to, you know, go out there and put the work in. And I think we had a good day of practice today. Um, we got to stack that tomorrow and then, you know, keep it going into the game. I think a lot of people got spoiled when you guys were scoring 30 points a game, 20 and 21. Uh -huh. Now it's the last two years you've dropped to like 18 and now 17. What's yeah. the, been the biggest difference, do you think? Uh, off the top of my head, I probably would say uh, just scoring in the red zone. You mm -hmm. know, like we have to be much better. Like the last two years, man, we've been, we haven't been that great. We, like we, we've been good getting to the red zone, but not scoring touchdowns, and it really hurts. You know, it's like, when our defense is playing really good, you know, holding teams under 20 points, mm -hmm. um, especially like, you know, first three quarters of the game, like we have to use those opportunities to, to really get a lead on teams. And we haven't done a good job of that. Um, but I think we're improving. I think we're starting to find some things that we like. Like I said, it just has to connect. How much uh, did you beat yourself up, up on the uh, Hail Mary? <sighs> Man, uh, I think initially I beat myself up a little bit, but like, I think like at the end of the day, like when I was like evaluating it, I don't think I could have done anything different, right? Like you get pressed at the line, you know, you get to the party a little bit late and, you know, nobody's like really expecting that there's going to be a pass interference called, you know, on the on last play of the game. Probably should have been, <laughs> but it, you know, it's tough, you know, to put that in, in the ref's hand. So you get your eyes around a little bit late and the ball drops and you realize how close you are. It's tough, but, you know, it comes with the game. Um, and, you know, how I look at it, man, it's like, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. Like I'm blessed to be here. And it's a great opportunity. And, 
you know, I can't think of anything else I'd rather do. So and keep going to work and eventually the tie will turn. Thanks, Chris. One of the most, if not the most in tune person with Mike mm -hmm. because of how long you guys have been together and yeah. your friendship, the position you both play. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know he, he didn't get the contract he wanted to start the season and, and he wasn't traded away either. Yeah. How do you think he's handled all that disappointment in terms of the way he comes into work every day and the way he shows up on TV? Yeah. Honestly, I think he's handled it great. I think he's handled everything, you know, phenomenally. And that's no surprise to me either. Like, you know, y'all know Mike, like I know Mike. He's, you know, he's the ultimate pro. He's gonna come here and do his job. You know, he's not just out here moping around or he's not like, you know, being like, you know, being an asshole to his teammates or anything. Like he comes here, he's the same Mike that he's been in the last, you know, nine, nine years. And he wants to win. He wants to show that, you know, that, that he's still at the top of his game. And I believe obviously like, the numbers are there, but he's still doing his thing. Um, and teams understand that too, which is why they try to cloud to his side and try to give him help. Um, but I think he's done a great job, man. I'm, obviously, I'm a big Mike supporter, but y'all know that. Yeah, well, when Baker was saying too that, you know, you guys were able to get, have more success getting the ball to him at the end of that game because mm -hmm. you were pushing the tempo and things like that. Mm -hmm. What does this team have to do? And of course, the tempo prevents teams from kind of like yeah. rolling coverage away on every snap. Mm -hmm. What do you guys have to do to be able to have more of, of that tempo throughout the game? Because I know Coach Bowles has said too, like, yeah. it, sometimes it, it causes this team to have more penalties. Yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes it can cause more penalties, especially on the road, like with crowd noise. Um, so we have to just be more disciplined to make sure that we don't have those penalties. Um, and then, you know, just staying ahead of the chains helps. Um, it's tough to, to, to get into a tempo when, you know, when you're on your heels. But when you get the defense on their heels, it allows you to switch tempos up a little bit more and allows you just a, a lot of different options. So just being better overall with our like, execution, our discipline will open up so many more things for us. You guys had, you guys had penalty problems in Tom's first year. Mm -hmm. And it was like a screeching halt after the Chicago game. What was done to stop it at that point? He said something that, that kind of put, a, put the brakes on it. I don't, I don't quite remember if there was any one thing. I just think like, like there comes a time where like you have to realize like we have to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. And you know, like once we realize that and like when we turn the corner, we can't look back. Um, we just got to get to that point. All right, thanks, Chris. Appreciate yes, it. Sir.